Okay, we are we are back. Screw screw the screw the fucking Steve. Uh now uh getting back to uh well we're back with the next video. We're back with the next video. The next segment of our show, uh progressive discussions. <coughs> and um I'm your host, James P. Madonna, and of course I'm here with the uh the Reverend Doctor uh William J. Eisenman. And uh I was just making reference to a specific uh, uh, a cat, a male cat that uh, was simply acting like a bitch. Hey. He didn't want to drink anything, didn't want to eat anything, didn't want to go out, didn't want to go to the bathroom, but kept on meowing, and, and it was quite annoying. <laughs> didn't know what he wanted, you know. But anyway, let me uh, do this story. Um, first, I, I will say... Hail a Krampus and happy Festivus for the rest of us. Um, Henry Ford. I didn't know this story until I uh, watched it. Um, when Henry Ford was a success with the Model T and the Model A uh, Fords, and his company was doing well, and he was taking good, good care of his employees, he had one problem. One thing that was uh, bothering him. The, at that time, the uh, automobile tires were made of real rubber mm. from the, the rubber tree. And his only way of getting uh, real rubber for his tires was uh, from uh, rubber tree farms in Southeast Asia, but the market was controlled by Europeans. And they were uh, gouging. Mm. They were gouging Henry Ford and the uh, U.S. automotive industry. Price gouging, you know. So you see where the corporate mentality comes from? Capitalism at, at its best. And I think it was, I'm not sure what country or countries, but uh, it might have been England. It might, but see, this is, where the, this is where the mentality of corporate greed comes from. You know, the United States at one time was just, owned and controlled by indigenous people but you know they brought over that mentality from Europe you know the people the colon the, the colonists that uh, invade uh, and occupy and use extortion and steal uh, everything of value from everyone else so anyway not to mention the inventors of the slave trade so anyway the Europeans had this uh, this stranglehold on the on the market for rubber and they were jacking up the prices and they were screwing over people like Henry Ford so Henry Ford had an idea to uh, purchase many acres in Brazil and ha and ha have um, rubber trees planted and create a rubber tree plantation which he called uh, uh, with the community that was built there, he called it Fordlandia. Okay, and he had Ford uh, management go down there and hire local Brazilian uh, workers that uh, lived on the premises. You know, they had like a like a, a ranch community there, and they had the rubber trees planted. Well, um, they started okay working um, uh, it was a nine to five shift and you know Ford was a stickler for um, efficiency and uh, you know when everybody punches in and punches out and it wasn't that bad you know nine to five compared to what uh, JP Morgan and Rockefeller was doing during the Industrial Revolution but it was one big problem uh, the workers had to work under uh, 100 plus degree mm. with humidity, high humidity uh, temperatures. It was unbearable they, in, in the heat of the day. So the workers uh, said, could we please 
change our shift to early morning and um, you know later on in, in, in the late afternoon and uh, a part of the evening you know when the temperature eases up well Ford management refused to comply they said mm -hmm. oh you have to continue working uh, outside in, uh, in the heat of the day and uh, they just it just got to them and they just uh, pretty much Peeled over. Rebelled. Oh, they, they, they rebelled. They they torched everything. Mm. They poured gas. They, they destroyed the time clocks. They destroyed the whole, all of Fordlandia. They, they gosh poured, darn unions. They poured gasoline all over and they torched the whole entire Fordlandia. And, you know, eventually Ford Motor Company had to get the Brazilian military oh, in yeah, there. But, but And then they hired, you know, they hired new workers. Oh, but not one drop of natural rubber ever made it to the United States from this idea of Fordlandia. Okay, uh, because what happened was uh, the invention of a, a synthetic rubber was started to be used in the industry. Now, the lesson to be learned is you see the pattern, it was corporate greed <laughs> that Henry Ford was up against referring to the Europeans that had, were price gouging him on, on rubber then he turns around his answer to their corporate greed ended up going downhill because of corporate greed because uh, he, he, he had, you know, they weren't showing any consideration or, or empathy with the, with the workers, with the employees who did not want, could not work nine to five because they were in an equatorial, very hot, humid, tropical environment. And you just can't, you know, maybe in, in a Ford plant in Dearborn, Michigan or whatever, you're indoors, you're in the north but not outside in the tropics. You have to have a different shift. I mean, they don't play, um, I don't. I think in Arizona and in in Miami, they don't play baseball. Mm. They don't have any day games in the, in the uh, afternoon outside, in the early afternoon. It's too hot, you know? So, just something interesting that I, I learned that I never knew before concerning Henry Ford. That's all. It's common to blame problems in the bedroom <coughs> on our aging bodies or on stress related to such things as kids, finances, and marriage. Well, stress will kill libido, number one. But lesser known culprits may reside in our medicine cabinets. Oh, yes, yeah. side effects? Yeah. Some of the most widely used drugs, including statins, can produce unexpected changes in sexual arousal and performance. Impotence, maybe? Impotence? Uh, well, statins have uh, more serious side effects now, too. When prescribing a medication, a physician will typically mention specific guidelines and need to know information. For instance, make sure to take dose with food. Avoid alcohol or expect to feel some nausea. However, one topic that isn't always discussed is how certain drugs may affect a patient's sex life. That should change, says Albert Wertheimer, a professor of pharmacy administration at Temple University, and Patricia Bush, a professor emeritus at Georgetown University School of Medicine. They recently co-authored Your Drugs and Sex. How prescription 
and non-prescription drugs can affect your sex life. And they discuss the book in a recent interview. Below are excerpts from that conversation. Question. Many people assume their doctors would notify them if a medication could significantly influence their sex lives, but this is not typically the case. Wartheimer says, most people 50 years old and over take drugs for conditions like diabetes, hypertension, high cholesterol, gout, asthma, depression, arthritis, allergies, gastro gastroesophageal reflux disease. And many of these drugs cause profound effects on sexual performance. Most patients assume that declining performance is due to aging, and physicians are not schooled in this area. Often, even if patients have a suspicion, the change could be due to a drug. They are too timid to inquire. Bush said, the problem right now is that patients don't ask about how drugs will affect their sex lives, and doctors don't tell. Why don't the doctors tell? Because the patients don't ask. What is this, don't ask, don't tell? Wouldn't it, does it, wouldn't it make for better doctors to hand out a comprehensive brochure going into all the details of a person's affliction? Yeah, but if you, when you're talking about sex or something, you know, it might have an effect on selling the drugs. Well, if people I, don't want to take the drugs, the drug companies don't want to have that. I've had they a, want to sell you the drugs. Yeah, but I've had a doctor mention okay. the word possible impotence ah! connected to a a certain drug. Uh -huh. That's a well, I guess, it's, it's, I guess it's, that's a good doctor. Yeah, it's a symptom with most hypertension medic medications. Yeah. Right there. Now, now there's been many uh, uh, negative articles c connected to statin drugs. Yes. Well, statin drugs have s serious side effects. I mean... Uh, Especially with people with heart problems because uh, it depletes the CoQ10. Not too good with the brain either. Yeah. S statin. Well, there are many things that the problems uh, with statins right now, and they know that, yet the doctors are still saying, it's the best drug we have. Well, you know, uh, they they mistakenly demonize cholesterol. Uh -huh. Cholesterol is actually good for the human body. It's the triglyceride level that, well, first of all, Oxidized. it's the blood sugar, it's the refined carbohydrates, it's sugar that is causing those triglyceride levels yeah, to, be high. to go high and you know regardless what the cholesterol is doing it's the triglycerides that are the culprits but the triglycerides are not coming from the fats and the diet per se they're coming from the sugar in the diet but it's the oxidized cholesterol within the blood vessels that cause the problem. But that's one in, that that's Oxidized. one ingredient of the plaque that that goes yes. into the arterial uh, inclusion. I mean, yeah. um, cholesterol they say is lesion. it's like a patch. It comes along and wants to patch up that injury, and then the calcium goes over top of that, and then you get hardening of the arteries. So it's it's a combination of mm -hmm. uh, substances like like making a lasagna. Ah, I love uh, lasagna. And my, my sister makes a very good, outstanding deep dish lasagna in a roaster pan. It's Valley, not, Valerie, it's, it, it's not little. Uh, it's not low like the pizzerias. Valerie Bertinelli was just on today on her cooking show, and she made lasagna with a, a hot sausage. Now what sweet the hell? Sausage and ground beef. Now what is a chick 
that spent her life dating uh, rock heavy, and roll. heavy metal, heavy metal rock and roll stars know about uh, 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 cooking, cooking good right. Italian food without pubic hairs in it. Uh, I told you that. You know what I mean? Cold. You know, I mean, I don't think it's very sanitary to have all them them tattooed rock and rollers with everything hanging out there. Cooking. I told you, what the, the, everybody loves Raymond's wife on the show. Well, she's got a show too. This is what happens. Well, she she uh, her character on the show <coughs> was a character that was a terrible cook and didn't know a damn thing about cooking. Well, not Tur anymore. It turns out that she has her own cooking show. There you go. Now you son of a bitch. The fucking cat. Bitch of a son. Don't now he wants to it. go out while while we're filming. You're a cocksucker. All he is. Here, now go. Now he's going to move away if you keep yelling. Go. Go, you fucking cocksucker. Jesus. Fuck. Now he wants to go out. Now that we're, we're filming. Now, he, now he, he ruins my fucking flags. What a fucking... I tell you, cats... Which is familiars, women, I, I know women that try to sabotage our show, <coughs> you know. The what kinds of unintended sex-related effects can prescription and over-the-counter medications have? That pisses me off. Bush said, cholesterol-lowering drugs, the statins, antidepressants, anti-anxiety and anti-psychotic drugs, Antifungals, anti ulcer, and anti epileptic drugs, oral contraceptives, and cancer drugs can all have consequences on sexual arousal and performance. The old chalet is affected, huh? The kinds of things that they can cause as side effects include erectile dysfunction. Difficulty achieving orgasm. Right. Ejaculation failure. Impotence. I might as well stay like this throughout the And whole decreased desire. Pain during intercourse. Pain. And lower testosterone. On whose part? The, not the man. Pain? Yeah, I would say so with the man. Pan in the balls or in the dick? I have no idea. I do not suffer from it, sir. Wartheimer said sleeping pills <clears throat> decrease interest in sex. And the same thing happens with many antihistamines for allergies. Antidepressants make ejaculation difficult to achieve. Really? So patients with premature ejaculation problems can use antidepressants to help. In other words, you, you know, um, a friend of mine I used to work with had a problem with uh, like hypersensitivity of the, of the dick, uh -huh. where he had premature, premature ejaculation. Ejac he was yeah. ha had premature ejaculation problems. And he read uh, somewhere that uh, St. John's wort as a standardized extract, Hypericum, will, may help that, and it worked for him. Uh -huh. With his ultra sensitivity. Also, the condom helped too, but he says the uh, St. John's wort helped. So maybe, since St. John's has a connection to, I don't know about anxiety, but has a connection to depression, Maybe the, his premature ejaculation was was emotionally connected. Maybe it was psychological. We'll never was, know, will we? We never know. Like he he we will never know. he said that like if you're with a new woman mm -hmm. for the first time, especially she if she's very attractive, and she's supposedly out of your league, and you're with this and you're you're with this woman, he says he would feel overwhelmed. Like, I can't believe this woman is actually with me. I actually have her in the flesh. Blah, 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 blah. And with him, instead of 
having impotence from anxiety, mm -hmm. premature. he would have premature ejaculation from anxiety. So he would have a different uh, symptom of uh, that. So I don't know. But it worked. The St. John's helped him. Why is it important that people be aware of these lesser known side effects? Oops. Bush said, people are living longer. Push, push in the bush. And in a lot of ways, that's a good thing because we are treating wow. <laughs> the chronic illnesses like diabetes and depression and high blood pressure well, that people have. It's a good thing because it's better than death, you know. <laughs> As a result, there's been a big increase in medicine use altogether in the last years. Because people are taking more drugs, the problem of sexual dysfunction caused by medicines is growing. Another big issue is that people, as they get older, they have more health issues. Well, yeah, because uh, they don't take care of themselves. That can interact with these drugs. So actually, the side effects get worse and are more likely to happen. For instance, aging itself can cause failures in sexual performance. Hey, take optimum antioxidants, people, and your aging will not be so bad. Let alone compounding issues like diabetes and so on. That's from eating the toxic American diet, the refined carbohydrates. What can patients do if a drug they have been prescribed seems to have negative sexual side effects. Wertheimer says, I recommend they chat with their doctor. Maybe they need a change of dosage. And look up more information about their condition and the drugs used to treat it. Yeah, don't like, don't if you have a doctor that gives you additional drugs to Ooh. cover up your symptoms and then you have side effects from that drug, then he gives you more and more and more and you end up like somebody I know taking eight different prescription medications. I don't even want to call them medications, just drugs. Then you have a dishonest physician who's... Uh, Pill pusher who's a, a glorified uh, a, a drug dealer, a pill pusher, yeah. Uh, a big pharma whore. <clears throat> However, generally, physicians know very little about if certain combinations of drugs might cause sexual difficulties. The answer is to experiment and change one of the drugs to see if it makes a difference. Yeah. I mean, uh, or go online and and find uh, natural alternatives. You know what I, I also learned uh, uh, trying to help out a friend who who has to get kidney dialysis, Ooh. who has nephritis. Hold on. <laughs> I learned I learned that corn silk tea is very beneficial <laughs> for kidney diseases. Better not be GMO corn. Uh. I never knew this. I I did the research and I found it. There's two other herbs I think, but corn silk was the primary natural uh, aid for kidney diseases. Uh, I'm not sure why kidneys in certain people fail. I really don't know. There is an autoimmune affliction. Uh, that is terrible, that is one kidney disease, but you know, they're not all autoimmune. Change of pace again. Tomato paste. I am seeking advice on a very touchy subject between me and my boyfriend of two years. Touchy subject? This has to do with feeling each other up? I am 24 years old. Ooh. When I was 21, Ooh. I was living in a different town and had a sexual relationship with another female. Yeah, they're not sugar and spice and everything nice anymore, these, these millennials, as they call them. 
this relationship did not last long because I became conflicted. Well, she wants us us each. She wants to... Uh, and eventually determined I was just not interested in that lifestyle. Well, she, want, she wants the shillelagh. My boyfriend is everything to me. Oh, brother, everybody's boyfriend is everything to them. Yeah, 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 yeah. From our values to spirituality, he is my perfect match. Yeah, sure. Every young girl raves, rants and raves like that about their boyfriend. We have always been open and honest with each other. And you see the guy, and he's like this, you know. He has a daughter. It looks like a doofus or something. From a previous relationship, so he likes to make the point that he can't hide his past. Well, he knocked some girl up young. That's all early on, yeah. I opened up about my past sexual history with the female. Now, he seems to be struggling with a lot of insecurity. Uh-oh. I'm not sure what else I can do to comfort him in usually, that I am not gay. Usually, uh, guys, some young guys get turned on by that whole bisexual thing. Oh, indeed. Some they guys. Do. Two women. They like two women. If they're included. Yes. I mean, if they're invited. Yes, of course. They have to be invited. They <laughs> I'm not gay. I was a young lady in a weird spot in life and experimented, like a lot of us do at that age. But he is taking this very hard. He hard. has never lashed out at me. He's not taking it soft, that's for sure. <laughs> or said anything negative about me, wanting to hook up with other women. But that's part of her past. That's the key word. He has told me that he just has to work on his own insecurities. That's the key word. It's part of her past. It's to the point that when we are in the same room and TV show talks about lesbians or threesomes, <laughs> the atmosphere gets awkward. I hate it. His insecurity is making me insecure. Hey. Some politicians that are popular today, they've tried uh, getting high in their, when they were younger. Does that mean that they're, that they are that way now? You know, a person's past should not, unless you were a real wacko in your <gasps> past. You know what I mean? Like if somebody was a pedophile or somebody uh, was uh, killed somebody. You know, but, you know what I mean? I mean, you know, sometimes the past uh, uh, bites you on the ass forever. But it, this, this should, this is nothing. This is, this is mild. Why can't he forget something that happened before we even knew each other? Even more so, right? He should, he should, shouldn't bother him. Was I wrong to tell him? How do I help him? What approach should I take to help him get over his insecurity? Only he could do that. I need advice badly. I don't want... This.